All right. Good evening, everyone. Good How's evening. everyone doing? Uh, doing great. Good. good. I am Pamela Trafton. I'm the Senior Neighborhood Improvement Services Coordinator with City of Jacksonville, and I'm also the Staff Liaison for our Jacksonville Youth Council which is open to 8th through 12th graders of Oslo County and Camp Lejeune. Uh, we meet every first Wednesday at 5 p.m. currently. If any changes will occur, we will definitely post and let you know if time changes will go through. Uh, but we are excited because tonight kicks off the first session of our partnership with Oslo County Health Department and Catch My Breath which is a educational program about vaping. And so I am excited to see how the sessions are gonna go, what the discussion and the dialogue will entail. But before we get started, we'll go around, do introductions and say who we are and what organization or what school we represent. My name is Christopher Foy. I'm the health educator assistant for the Oslo County Health Department. My name is Amy Small, and I'm a public health educator at the Onsu County Health Department. My name is Adam Evans. I'm a 12th grader at Lejeune High School. My name is Raphael Evans. I'm a freshman at Lejeune High School. My name is Connor Gradet. I am from Jones Senior High School. I also represent Jones Senior. <laughs> Again, the Hunters Creek Middle School. Wow. And I represent the Sigma Beta Club of Jacksonville. Wait a second, we went from middle school to high school? I like that progression. <laughs> Go ahead and speak it in existence. We went to high school, yes sir. <laughs> so, um, and our guests, would you like to introduce yourselves? Um, I'm Ruth Rose, I'm Conrad's mom, and just proud of what he's doing. Awesome. He's in a lot of different organizations, a lot of different clubs. He's secretary of this fraternity of Sigma. So I'm just really proud of them. All right, perfect. Okay. Would you like to introduce? <laughs> <laughs> I catch off guard, sorry. <laughs> 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 That's me. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> All right, so at this time, we'll turn over to um, Chris and Amy for Catch My Breath. All right. I really want to sit here and talk to you guys, but I have to move around. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't. I can't focus unless I'm moving. Um, yes, you can go ahead and get to the first screen. So we're starting with everybody's favorite thing. You guys have been in school all day, and you were just hoping that you'd get here. And I'd say, guess what? Guys are taking a test. No? That's not what you were before? No. We're not even on the same page to start it out. Goodness gracious. All right, so... It's a survey. It is a survey. Don't think of it as a test. You can't fail it. You can't pass it. Um, but let me say some things. Um, here, Chris is going to give them to you, but not yet. Because my last couple groups, I think they just started filling out and they didn't listen to me. So I'm going to stop. So it's asking, your, it's asking about e-cigarettes. Okay, It's asking about your knowledge. It's a test. It's actually a test for me because you're gonna test your knowledge now, and then you're gonna test your knowledge at the end. Do the clicker? Yeah. Let's go. Oh, we did that. Yeah. Check. All right, so opening question. If someone tells you, and we talked about this, I'm sorry, gentlemen right here, Adam and Raphael. Okay. Um, we talked about this a little bit when we did our session zero last month, but if someone tells you to make good choices, what do you think that means? Do and parents, feel free to answer as well. <laughs> What do you think it means if someone says make good choices? Like doing the right thing. Doing the right thing? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Pick the mole side even if it's the empty one. Take the say that again. Pick the mole side even if it's the empty one. The mole side. The mole side. You are speak see, you're moral, too smart for me. The moral side. Moral oh, side. Oh, okay. As I was saying, I you have all that computer language and everything else. I'm like, you're smarter than me. You have to bring it down. <laughs> yes. So make good choices, right? Think about what you're doing. Is this good? Is this bad? Is this healthy for me? Is it um, going to benefit me? Is it going to benefit somebody else? Or is it going to be harmful? Is it going to be hurtful, right? Um, I'm sure everybody's been told make good choices, right? Yeah. Like I tell my kids that every day as they're getting out, they're probably so tired of hearing it. Probably need to change it up because they're probably tuned that out now. Um, all right, make good choices. So 
Next slide. All right, um, making decisions for yourself. So when we make decisions for yourself, sometimes we make big decisions, sometimes we have to make small decisions, right? Um, I should have prefaced this. So this session one, really long. Session two, short. Um, and so what I might do is we'll just honor your time. We'll stop at six o'clock. And so if that's okay with everybody, and then the last part of session one, we'll just bring okay. on to next month, which is fine because it's weird how off they are. Okay. Um, we could do this really quick. No, I was going to do the bag thing, but two of you guys have been here already. So maybe we'll save it. Maybe next <laughs> week if we have more. We'll bring <laughs> but, exactly. <laughs> no, I know. Maybe at the end. Maybe at the end. We'll do that. All right. So making big decisions and making small decisions. So we're going to look at these next couple questions. I want you to tell me, do you think that's a big decision or a small decision? And you're not wrong, no matter what you say. I'm not going to say, no, you're wrong. It's Everybody's different. Should I have a banana or an apple with my lunch? Is that a big decision or small? Small. Can I say yeah. for his instance, it actually would be a big decision? Because he's a diabetic. And See? He's gonna really, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she just get. proved it. She I just proved it. it. For I some mean... people, it's a big decision. And some people, it's a small oh. decision. Um, for me, it would be a small decision. They're both fruit. They're both healthy. Either one, I'm, I'm winning, right? For him, not so much. That's a big decision. Um, all right, next one. Which college should I attend? Big, big or small? Big decision. Small, pretty big. Oh, no. See? <laughs> you never know. Small. I, have two choices I already understand. I got Harvard, and I know I got MIT. All right, well, there we go. But your decision, so you may not have many decisions that you're looking at, yeah. but the decision could be a big decision as to which one you go. It's kind of life-changing people you meet and the connections you make, right? Mm -hmm. right. So there's different ways to look at it. Um, but I agree. Each one. Yeah. Right, big decision, right? You think it's a big decision? Yeah. I feel like it was a big decision um, as well for different cities or states or all kinds of things. All right. Uh, which homework assignment should I do first? Small decision. That's a big one. <laughs> a big one. All right. So the book does say what it should be, and I don't really care what the book says. We're going to just discuss it out because everybody's different. The book says small decision, and that's why I didn't care what the book said because I thought it was a big decision. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a big decision. And again, for some people, it's not, and some people it is. In my mind, why did you think it was a big decision? Because... You know, it could be some. You could think, okay, easy assignment, I'll do this first. But then you're just setting yourself up at the end, you know, you got through all these small assignments. Because either way, it's going to add up to the same. You either have like one or two big assignments or all right. three or seven small ones. All right. It's easier to get the harder ones out first than, than just do little ones. So you're not exhausted by the end. I like it. Oh, Why did you good. think, Raphael, it's a small decision? Um, because it's going to take up the same amount of time either way. All right. I like it. And neither one of you are wrong. You're both right. Mm -hmm. It's just a different perspective. I thought it was a big decision because I thought if I do this decision, cause, or just do this decision. Don't do it. <laughs> if I do this homework assignment that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, it takes a lot of time, what if that one's not due until next month and then I put off the one's due tomorrow? I thought I may, I may have just messed up. <laughs> but... But yes, the book says it's a small decision. So. Either way. All right. Should I try out for the soccer team? Hmm. What are you thinking about that one? <laughs> small. Small? I think Very small, because that is a finite no. <laughs> so I think you're telling me it's an easy decision for you. Yeah, by medical, I can't. Okay. All right. I guess we don't so that, but I think because of the medical component, it should yeah. be a big decision because yeah. it, it could be a bad choice if you decided to yeah. do it, like right? If my, if my doctor figured out I decided to do soccer, he, ooh, they, they would not be too happy. <laughs> what did you guys say? Small decision. Small decision. What did you say, Raquel? Um, small decision. Small decision. All right, why? Um, Just curious. Because, I mean, where it's kind of worse, you don't like it, you don't got to go back to it. There you go. All right. <laughs> so um, the book officially says it's a big decision. Yeah. I thought it was a small decision, but at the same time, it might be big because my health might be at risk if I try to do soccer and start running. I told you I don't like to run. I can't run. <laughs> I don't like to run. But uh, they justified it as, well, what if, you know, you're debating on joining the soccer team or getting a job? Or, you know, if you do the soccer team, are you going to have enough time for homework? That kind of stuff. So, anyways, 
The big decisions we have to put more thought into. If we're trying to pick out what college we're gonna to go to, we're gonna take more time, we're gonna research it, what city is it in, how many people go there, how much does it cost, right? Um, unless there's a medical something, um, banana or apple, we might not be like, huh, well, this one's red and this one's yellow. Like, we're not gonna sit there and analyze it, we just don't pick up a fruit, right? So big decisions we want to put more thought into such as that would be a big decision for you. You're gonna to have to calculate the calories and the sugars and all that stuff. It's a big decision. All right, next slide. All right, this was the three bag activity that we're gonna save for the end if we have time. All right, uh, yeah. All right, big decisions. The choice to use or not use tobacco products, including e-cigarettes, is a big decision, right? There's health implications from it, health, um, I don't even know where, where I'm going for. Um, it can affect your health, so therefore it should be a big decision. All right? Remember, just because you think, no, I'm not gonna do it, or yes, I am gonna do it, and you already know that answer, that would be maybe an easy decision for you, an easy yes or no, but it's still a big decision. It still should require a lot of thought into it, okay? All right, so for the whole program, we're gonna talk about making informed decisions and I try to, I forget sometimes, but I try to relate it back. We are talking about vaping, but a lot of the stuff we're talking about can be used in all other areas when we're making decisions, learning how to make those informed decisions. I just realized there's a monitor over there I can look at. <laughs> learning how to, <laughs> what influences our decisions. Um, how the media targets young people, that's my favorite one. I got to do that in the class today, and that was a lot of fun. And, um, practicing skills in un uncomfortable situations. And we're also gonna do a social media, it's a social media campaign. That sounds really dramatic. We are just gonna design, each of you or in a group is gonna design a social media post that you could do that is gonna be vaping prevention. Um, all right, so there's no bad questions. The book says there's no wrong answers. That's not true because there are some things when we talk about what's the legal age, there is a wrong answer with that. Okay. <laughs> but most of the questions we ask, there aren't wrong answers. So I want you just to answer. It's, it's fine. Um, whatever you have to say. We're going to respect others' privacy. So in some of it, we ask, like, um, where could you possibly run into a situation where somebody is vaping? We're not going to say Bob's house. We're just going to say a friend's house or something, something that doesn't identify somebody. Um, and I made the last one that wasn't up there, but I put it up there. Partici participation makes class more fun. So if you participate, I don't have to hear myself as much. And you don't have to hear me as much. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we do. This is the last worksheet of today, I promise. Um, but this is going to be a... Can we give you this? Yep, you can go ahead and hand it out. But if I can have one so I can talk about it because I can't see that one up there going in and out. Um, you're going to keep this. You're not going to turn it in to me or anything. Um, you're going to just read that state, those statements. There's seven statements. And on the left side... Yeah, I'm about to say... Yes. You want to see it? You can see it. We have plenty. Do you want to get... Do you want to give... Okay. Do you want one more? Sure. Okay. Um, so on the left side... I think it's fun, and I, I honestly, I wish somebody, I could have watched this given and done these um, before reading through it. So put your thoughts on the left side for right now, and then we're going to go through this session, and let's see if any of them change or if you learned something from the first session. You don't have to do the bottom part, just those seven statements. That's it. Okay. You have to do double the work. So I was contemplating doing these pre and post tests with the teachers also. And the adults. I think it'd be interesting. I wish I would have done it before reading over it because I can promise you, I should have said that on that survey too. If I would have done that survey before learning the curriculum, I would not have had those answers correct. I can promise you they wouldn't be right. If nobody tells you and nobody informs you, you can't know. Then we take right? this test and we will say we had different opinions on them. Huh? We had different answers when we took it. Mm. Remember when we took it. 
when we were going through it, yeah. yeah. The pre and post test actually was a lot longer. We took a lot out. We just wanted the information that we was going to gauge our um, teaching ability. We didn't know we teach you, but you make an assumption that most of the time it's going to be influenced. You're right. We're going to talk about influences too. So you already had a 12th grade. Yeah, you were 12th grade. Am I 12th okay. grade? Yeah. <laughs> you have rise and failure. Whatever grade you want to be. <laughs> All right. All right. So today we're just going to talk about the very basic parts of an e-cigarette. We're going to educate you, hopefully, so you know what's in it, what could be in it, and some of the things it does to us. So when you think of vapor, what do you think about? Water. Water. Yep. Anybody else have another? You can click. Yep. You can click twice. Okay. That's fine. All right. So you think of water when you think of vapor, right? Well, um, e-cigarettes vapor, you see the quotes, right? It's not water vapor. It's an aerosol made up of tiny particles or droplets that are inhaled and exhaled by an e-cigarette user after the flavored e liquid is heated. That's a lot. I said a lot. It's not water, okay? It's an aerosol and has, pain. yep, which is about to happen. What do you think of whenever you hear the word aerosol? Febreze. Febreze? <laughs> so, the pump one's like this. I don't know how Febreze comes, but if it's a one of those like sprayer, like a water sprayer, wouldn't be an aerosol, but like the, what'd you say? You can click it again. Hairspray. 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 Like Aquanet and Baby Brown. Spray paint. Yeah. Those are aerosols. Okay, it's a pressurized um, container. Lysol. Oh, she said yeah, Lysol. like Lysol. Yeah, all mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that's aerosol. Um, so, I'm gonna, this is really going to mess me up. That's a slide 30. Uh, inhaling the, the aerosol of an e-cigarette it isn't safe, and it has both long, short and long-term side effects, so we'll talk about those in detail later. But next. All right, so if it's not water, what is it? Oh, you can, nicotine. Do what? It's nicotine. We are going to get there. You can click twice. So one more? Just one. All right, so who wants to try reading those? Yes. Vegetable glycerin makes the quote-unquote smoke and carries other ingredients. Propylene glycol makes the quote-unquote smoke and carries other ingredients as well. You're right. So we have vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol, okay? Doesn't sound like something I would be wanting to put in my body, but um, both of those are actually have been tested and to be ingested, they have been tested and were safe, but they've never been tested inhaling them. And so that's what's making the smoke. So it's, they put these two things in there just to cause that smoke, I guess because people like the looks of the smoke, I'm not really sure, but it makes that big, huge puff and that's what causes it to do that. Um, next, do one of you guys wanna read that one for me? Oh, nicotine gets you hooked. All right, nicotine, it gets you hooked. Nicotine is addictive. What does the word addictive mean? Your body grows a physical dependence on it. Nice. You said that very well. Um, so 99% of e-cigarettes contain nicotine. Even some that claim they have none. Um, nicotine is the drug found in tobacco, tobacco products, and it makes them addictive. We talked about that. And we talked about what it makes you, makes you do. It makes you addictive, which means you're going to want it over and over again, right? So... Why though? Why do you think then that they can advertise saying no nicotine or this one doesn't contain it? If ninety nine percent, if they've tested them, ninety nine percent contain it. Just like the quote unquote zero sugar products, if you look at the back, there's usually <laughs> carbohydrates in it that count as sugar. It's so a minuscule amount. In it, so it's misinformation. So they leave something out, or they don't say this. Also, it's not regulated. Just like Tic Tacs. It's not regulated. There's nobody, there's not, there's nobody over there testing all of them to make sure that they're doing what they say they're doing or they're putting into it what they say they're putting into it. All right, next. All right, the red one. Last one is the flavoring chemicals. It hides the taste of the other stuff and attracts new users. Because why would we want to taste nicotine and the other two, the yellow and the green one? We don't want to taste that, right? So they put in a flavoring chemical because that's going to attract you to use it. it smells good. I don't know what it tastes like. It says high taste, so I'm assuming it tastes like what it smells. Um, so the flavoring chemicals, 
And so do you think that it's safer because we added those flavoring chemicals? Because it, I mean, it smells like strawberry. It's even worse. Right? That's where I'm going with it. It would be even worse, right? We're adding something else. Again, the flavor, they, those chemicals um, typically have been tested for ingesting, meaning you eat, like if you ate them, you would be okay. Don't go eat these things because I'm saying this. I'm just saying they have been tested to eat it, that ingesting them, they were safe, but they've not been tested for inhaling them. And we do know that they can be to toxic to inhale. All right, the bottom line is, do I want to read that? Chris. Chris can read Okay. <laughs> Eight liquids are not made of water. <laughs> <laughs> They're not made of water. That's the bottom line, okay? So these ingredients are what they put in to the pods, the vape sticks. That's the actual liquid that goes into them, okay? So the next slide, we're going to talk about, although those other ingredients are what they pour into it, into those pods, it's not the only thing you're inhaling, okay? So the, um, the e-cigarette e aerosol contains more than just the ingredients of the e-juice. Chemical reactions occur that create new chemicals. So it's heated, <coughs> so it happens, the element heats up, but when it heats up and you have all these metal components, something happens to that metal and it causes chemical reactions and so each puff may also include, it says may also because every brand is made up of something different, a different kind of metal. So how about that first one? Because this is one I, that got me. Anybody know what that says? Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. You know what formaldehyde is used for? Isn't that the pass you out? The, um... That's ammonia. Oh, no, ammonia brings you back. No. That's, um, That's chloroform. 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 Uh, chloroform. 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 No, this is even, I feel, well, I feel like this might be even worse. If <laughs> I remember correctly, either A, it is toxic to inhale, or B, it's used as laughing uh, gas. No. Nope. Can't remember exactly. I mean, toxic to inhale, yes. Yeah, that's yes. Right. That's what embalming? Yes. That's what she it said. That embalming. Was. So <laughs> when a person dies, <laughs> They use formaldehyde to preserve the body so that it doesn't have the odor and it doesn't start decomposing too quickly. Um, also, if anybody's in biology, have you ever dissected a frog or a worm or, I don't know, I found out today that some people in high school have dissected cats. I have changed oh, forever. Oh, I was on this song. Oh, Iowa, I guess in Iowa, yeah. they can dissect cats. <laughs> Anyways, have you ever dissected an animal in biology class? That's know. in the cotton. That's in know. the cotton ball, I, right? I think. Well, just like the animal, we like when whatever it is, a frog. You we, didn't? No, we didn't. I think they're getting rid of that. <laughs> they had worms. So yeah, when they open up that yeah. that package, that's what you smell is formaldehyde. Yeah. It's oh. what's in there so that they can then test or you know look at, and it keeps them somewhat composed so that they can study them. Wow. We don't want to inhale that. We put it in dead bodies. <laughs> we don't want to breathe this way. And then uh, the other metals, nickel, um, cadmium, tin. I don't know what that, what that one is. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Acrolein. And lead. And again, if I can't pronounce it, I probably shouldn't be breathing it. I think I said I don't know. Yeah, you probably got it. All right, so that's what happens with the chemical reaction. Next. Now, do you yes. know if any of that will show up, like on drug tests or anything? Have they had anything? So those particular items, I don't think they would typically check for on a drug test. Now, if there were other items in it, because I know other things, drugs have been put into the vapes. They do put drugs into vapes. Um, those things, I'm not a professional in that, but I would assume those would definitely show up. Mm -hmm. um, now... I don't know if there's enough data out. Maybe this is something I should look up to. I know lead was on there. So long-term use, I don't know if they have studied that yet to see about lead exposure. Um, like the lead, maybe like lead paint. Name. Like how long did it take us to realize that a lead paint was not safe? Right. Um, right. I'm sure even more is going to come out um, right. once we get enough, once, not we, but once they get enough get data. Um, so don't hit next, I think. Oh, I don't know. How do you hit play on that? It's a play button right here. Is it?
If you vape nicotine, you could be inhaling toxic metals like nickel, chromium, and lead that can damage your lungs. Um, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do when we come back, and that way you guys have an idea. Um, so what we would have done next is divided up, or we would try to let each of you individually, depending on how many people are here, but you're going to get a piece of paper that has all of those things we just talked about. Let's see here. Aerosol analysis. So I'll let you look at it really quick. So it breaks down those items, the toxicants, flavor of chemicals, the carcinogens, I think it says on the back, heavy metals. And so you'll each have a card and Raphael right here has carcinogens circled. And that's the one with formaldehyde. That's one I like to talk about. So I feel like it's very impressionable. Um, and you're gonna read over your little paragraph that you have circled. And then you're gonna, on a sticky note, you're going to write down one thing. So it'll say like formaldehyde causes sore throat. Cause that's what it said. I'm sorry, carcinogens, whatever your red, red word is. Carcinogens cause, can cause sore throats or carcinogens can cause What's that saying? Cancer. Cancer. What did you have? Flavor what? chemicals. So do you see one thing that affects the body? Uh, what is it? Dactyl. Oh, uh, mm. Diacetyl? I'm actually not sure how to pronounce that, but it's popcorn lung. Excited. Popcorn lung. It's, um, um, it's the, for the lung, it's diacetic. Yes, but the D Y S O L A T I C, something like that. Close to it. Okay, dialastic. Because that's what I have. I have hot curve. I have hot curve. Diacetyl. Diacetyl. Oh, I have to get the exact pronunciation. Um, Diacetyl. 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 Diac
yeah, yeah when ours, we were there and that's i mean i'm sure kadena did too yeah. i do believe all the schools absolutely had issues but i definitely hearing some feedback as to some of these schools out in town having a lot when of i worked in a school yeah. that was a bad when i worked in school system I feel like the repercussions on base are just a little bit more only because it goes up to the parents' work. Yeah. Yeah. So you have that component, which I think kind of, I feel like when my parent, my parents, my kids went to base school, like mm -hmm. I would tell them, if you do something, it's not just a slap on the wrist. It's not a slap on the hand. You're, anyways, this is always the case, but you're representing your family, right? Okay. When you go out there and you do whatever it is, good, bad, or ugly, you're a, rep a representation of your family and even more so when you're on base because it's not something that's going to be found out and then nobody else will know no that's not that's not the case <laughs> I think the bathroom's got a vape detector yeah. oh we're going to talk yeah, yeah Joe Senior yeah, Joe Senior got the uh, yeah how does Chris got vape detector yeah. now in the bathroom because the girls yeah. were going into the bathrooms so I know this is a problem. We are definitely going to touch on that. I got I just did session three and four with another class, and we got on to that because I was like, that is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry, that is that's, you've got to draw the line somewhere. That's really yeah, nice. Yeah. Like I said, all their backpacks were searched about two weeks ago. The security and the office administrator came into the school and searched no. all backpacks. It was just said the big school they were Yeah, and yeah. Every single morning, somebody's in there. And, and so we're going to actually use that. That was one of our refusal um, strategies that we talked about when we were going back and forth with some teens today. And I was like, if you don't want to say no, it's not cool, you could say, I don't know if that just came off of somebody's toilet. I mean, I think that's a good, you should not be judging me if I don't want to take something you're trying to give me. I don't know what's, not only do I not, not know what's in it, I don't know where it's been. And if there's a case that it has been in a bathroom, on the floor, or on a toilet, or somewhere else, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume it hasn't been put in a Ziploc bag and kept safe. <laughs> I'm gonna, so there, there's your takeaway. We haven't even talked about refusal strategies, but between now and the time we do that in four months, yeah. There's gonna be some. Yeah. So bring friends, bring, um, non-friends spread the word that we will be having our next meeting here and you know it's going to be on all of us to bring a friend or two <laughs> i hope i didn't scare you away yes yeah, don't we didn't scare away, didn't scare away. <laughs> <laughs> but i definitely appreciate y'all for being here um yes good information um, and the great thing about it is going to be available to review later too so you can always review the information